Well, it's Thursday. It's a little early, but hello to my dragon family. Araya here, and I am in Sedona. So wanted to come and share with you guys. I don't know if you can even see. I know my face looks different looking at myself after the last three days of work um, with the dragon hearts here. We have been in the most powerful space and uh, life transforming for each of us but also for this place. Uh, if you haven't been familiar with Sedona, Sedona is a land of energy vortexes, right? There's vortices here that are just incredible to sense and experience, but I don't think people are aware of how many dragons are here. There are dragons surrounding the valley in the rocks and to be able to experience and connect with them and actually go to five different sites um, where we did activations where specific dragon portals were opened within. Hi, Kristina. Uh, I know Kristina has been feeling the energy shift since we started work on Monday. And yes, things are shifting. We had some big, big energies happen. Big pieces for the planetary grids, which as you guys are aware, uh, the dragons hold the, the grids in place for the planet. So there's lots of light workers, there's lots of beings, there's huge collaboration happening right now from so many levels. Hi, Teresa. And so to come here and finally have the first actual um, activation in place of one of the larger pyramids, it really surprised me actually. I knew we were coming for three days of work with the Dragon Hearts. We had some amazing personal transformation work. Hi Robin. And uh, I know that it's planting seeds energetically for those that are going to be part of the next uh, lineup of programs with the Eye of the Dragon and next year's Dragon Hearts. But what also revealed was the specific spots. Um, I knew there were a couple. I thought there were three. There ended up being five because the greater picture that unfolded in the divine synchronicity of work, and I love this, when you're on purpose, you're going to see things align and flow so beautifully and with ease and grace. Hi, Anne. And when we started, the flow of things on Tuesday was our day out in the field. So we actually did our first activation with um, six in formation, which with our dragons present created 12 around one. Uh, the one in the center ended up being Tiamat coming up full force and actually finally connecting to human group. Hi, Teen Marie. Uh, and it, this, the Metatron's cube actually activated in each of the individual points and to experience that geometry in its full activation in uh, energetic form here with us between a group of six. It was powerful a group of 12 actually with our dragons. So I just want to share with you um, what what ended up happening was having one spot in actually the location where we are in the house. This house is built uh, knowing I was here in January with the earth angels, knowing there was dragon energy in this house and that I would come back and have the retreat here for the dragon hearts being led to an amazing chef, Chef Taylor Dean cooking with love. If you need a cook in Sedona, Wow, amazing vegan cuisine, uh, lights up. Everything about this experience, hi Christiana, was high vibration. Everything led us into the most beautiful openings within ourselves energetically possible and being on this land. And then the others that opened up were uh, four specific points that as I started seeing them the night before we went out, realized that there were actually, I thought there were three, there were actually four specific points that set the base of the pyramid that when you're working with the elementals, you'll feel uh, America by form with the elementals in each of the four corners and the black and white dragons in the apexes. So when that set into place, we actually had to go and activate a final piece in the center, which was the apex of the pyramid. I actually felt it pull up and saw the entire valley of Sedona beginning to unpin itself from the grids as the pyramids actually started reverse or shifting in opposite directions, the bottom from the top starting to spin. And that's really, I finally got clarity what these activations are about. Not only are we activating the matrix C ley lines through the planet with all of these activations, what's starting to happen is uh, as we go into the layers of dimensional uh, potential, so we're between third and fifth right now, that as we move into higher potential dimensions, we're um, sandwiching or collapsing dimensional space so that we actually move everything into one combined place. And I was able to actually see the dimensional uh, layerings and so as we do that, doing this first point to lift up the, the grid works of the planet and starting having it expanding out, it lifted up and shifted, and I'm not gonna go through the details of the specific geometry and how it shifted, but knowing that uh, the grids are unpinning. And that's a big part of what these 
global activations are going to be doing is we're unpinning the 3D uh, anchors, let's call them, that are holding the dimensional space here in place. And so actually seeing the valley floor, the four points activate and start spinning, knowing that things are unpinning and feeling really radically different in myself and in the, the space that we're in. So I wanted to share about that with you guys. How does that affect us? And says, well, what you're gonna start feeling, um, I know that I've had emails and texts from a couple different people while I've been here that on Monday they started feeling, I know Kristen was one, the energy really um, strongly, like feeling their, their dragon connection really come in stronger. She said, contacted me and said, well, my dragons are really getting active. I need some clarity on that. Can we line up a session? So with your journey with the dragons, is the connection getting stronger to your personal dragon, to your dragon heart, your um, light body potentially starting to anchor more in uh, the fifth dimensional plane becoming more real in your experience, manifestation and flow. And when you're living in your heart, in, your, in the purity of your center line intent, you're gonna start th seeing the ability to manifest and pull things in very quickly. And I'm gonna show you with you, this sounds sort of crazy, it was my first experience with it, but um, we had on Tuesday, one of the uh, location sites was way up a canyon, up a four wheel drive canyon that you literally need a four wheel drive to get up to, or you're hiking four miles in one direction. We had such a series of synchronicities, we ended up manifesting a ride halfway up, that if we'd gotten a ride all the way up, we would have gone to the wrong location because I had let my mental mind sort of override where I thought we needed to go, looking at the overhead view of the site and then having about three fourths of a mile to walk through the woods and the magic of this canyon to connect our hearts and our bodies into the land, into the nature, and be able to detect the two giant dragons on either side of the canyon that were head to tail, head to tail connecting it, and then being led out to the site where most of the people that go to the vortex in that area walk right past where we needed to be. Finding in there, and I'll post some pictures later, finding in there a perfect shaped heart in the rock that was already outlined in these black stones. Like nobody had placed them there. They were naturally there, this beautiful heart outlined. And it was on the direct line between the heart of the dragon on that side of the canyon and the heart of the dragon on the other side of the canyon. And everything about that was about connecting to the heart of Tiamat. And it unfolded so beautifully. But then manifesting and being surrendered. I love this part of our journey. When we surrender to the flow and are okay with what is rather than forcing an agenda, magic can flow and manif what we really want can manifest towards us. So an example of that, we had all surrendered. Okay, now we have three miles to walk back to the car. It's one o'clock in the afternoon. We're hungry. Our food is in the car. Our uh, hot sun, right? We're in Sedona. It's a hot sunny day. We had some cloud cover and some breeze, thankfully. We knew that the activations, when we were feeling the spinning of the geometries, what was very interesting was that the wind would pick up, almost like creating the tornado or being created by that, and feeling the air dragons sending a breeze up to cool us. And as soon as the activation would be complete, absolute stillness, no wind at all. It was very interesting to experience that. But surrendering to this three mile walk down the canyon, getting to a point where it actually meets the road, and there's not a lot of there's not tons of traffic. Maybe every 10 minutes or so, a, a Jeep will work its way up or down. A Jeep passing the one point on the trail where you actually can meet the road and either choose to walk down the road or walk down the trail. And if we'd started walking down the trail, we would have become committed to the trail for the next 2.7 miles. A Jeep with six seats open in it actually pulled by right then and we held it down and said, is there any way we could get a ride down? And we got a beautiful ride all the way down the mountain. So that we got to our lunch, we weren't worn out for the rest of the activations. It was just an amazing manifestation. So we felt so supported that the dragons lined up everything and it flowed. And that's what happens when you're on purpose and what you're supposed to be doing. Hi Willow, good to see you. So just wanting to share that with you that you're gonna start feeling, Anne's question there, how's that affect you? You're gonna start feeling the unpinnings and the more potential of fifth dimensional awareness arising and showing up for you. And as we continue the activations over the next year, I know that there's a bunch lining up in the next year. I got more information about this being a specific pyramid, like the full Merkaba. If you envision the eight-sided Merkaba with the four points, so a four-sided pyramid, much like in Giza, um, but energetically also with the apex down below. And um, with that, that's what's in place. It actually shifts to another level to lift it up higher uh, so that it's broadcasting like a satellite dish. 
But the point being, that's one in this area. This area now has this pyramid activated and it is going to be the corner point of a much larger pyramid that is going to have four points and a central apex that sets a bigger pyramid in place. So as the activations continue over the next year or so, things are gonna start really shifting for us. And it's gonna be in what we feel in our energy bodies and in our connection to our dragons being much more readily available. So well, the other piece I was gonna start sharing was manifestation. People have experienced a lot of spaceships and UFOs sightings of other beings, other planetary beings coming and being very attracted to this area. It's a hot spot for seeing that. I have never seen that, never experienced it. And we actually set as a group our intention, because we did set our intention on that hike that we manifest a ride, right? We first envisioned a truck, truck picked us up, and we're envisioning a, a Jeep, and whoa, here's a Jeep. So um, we set our intention at the dinner table last night, looking up at this incredible view, which you can see through the reflection of the glass behind me out there. We've got these gorgeous red rocks of Cathedral Rock. And uh, I had said, all right, we're so good at this, let's manifest because I really wanna see an actual spaceship. I wanna know the truth of that. I wanna experience it. And so we just set our intention. And the intention was, okay, we wanna see it during dinner out here in the sky. Well, it did manifest actually at three in the morning. I was awoken at 2.30, wide awake, inspired to go outside on one of the outside, there's like day beds outside. I thought, okay, I'm gonna wrap myself up in my blanket and go sleep under the stars. Go out and there's Orion, which has always been a home star constellation for me felt myself in my heart for the first time, not have a longing to be there. there. It created a lot of sadness for me through a lot of my life, looking up to Orion and seeing the center star in the belt and feeling like the homesickness, this, oh, I'm so ready to be home. And I felt in my heart finally, wow, I'm surrendering. I'm at peace to be here because I'm actually finally on my purpose. And as that conscious thought went through my being, shooting star went right through Orion. And I went, well, okay, beautiful. And then I start seeing this movement in the sky and I thought, oh, there's a plane going by. And I see these lights moving and they come to a stop and they stop. And they stayed there for the next hour. And I started seeing, uh, noticing there was one above and two out further on the horizon. And you can look at it and say, it's a star. And I, I'm now convinced that most of the time when we look at the sky, if there are ships around, they are disguising themselves as stars so I know, how cool is that, right Willow? They are, to the naked eye, if you look up, you will just see it as a star because of the lights. They were, with, they were shifting between white, green, red, and blue lights and they were signaling back and forth because they were flickering uh, specifically to each other. And there ended up being about five in my field of vision. There's a circular orb around them. But what's amazing to me is I got photos of it. And I got photos of them in their dark blue, light blue, um, white, green, and uh, red face actually because you start to doubt yourself you start to question go well maybe that's just a star and my stargazer app on my phone was not working it was frozen it wouldn't actually operate and so there I am looking at it watching it starting to doubt and then another one starts coming and it was red light so I thought oh that must be an airplane coming through the sky photographed it as soon as I got a shot of it and the other one together in the sky so I have a red orb and a white orb and I do have photos of the white orb actually with a circle within a circle so we know it's not a star and there's several photos like that where it sh changes the geometry within the center of it and uh, anyway so the red one after I took the photo I pulled the phone down and it was gone it was no longer in the sky so I know it wasn't an airplane that was going to move across and I would see the entire trajectory up so that blows me away because the collaboration aspect of what went on here this week we felt so much support and collaboration, not only with all the dragons being around, they were the biggest piece, but with so many angelic and star beings being present to know that, all right, this is an important piece. The earth is an important piece to get lit up. And so my whole body is tingling on this right now. I just wanted to come and share some of that stuff with you guys. I will share some of the pictures. I'm gonna share the um, picture. I took a picture of the dragon hearts of all six of us on each of the activation sites so that I have that frequency of each one around me, but I will share the one with the heart uh, in the rock because it's absolutely astounding that we just stumbled on it and I don't think anyone ever goes and sees it. It's absolutely incredible. So wishing you guys a great day. I'm coming on early because uh, I have to drive to the airport in Phoenix and I thought I had two extra hours and they just changed my flight. So 
They just sent me a text. We rebooked you from a five o'clock flight to a three o'clock, so I got to get on the road. <laughs> so thanks so much for being here. I love my dragon family. I'm excited to see what unfolds in the next months, especially we are one. We had the full moon while we were here. Didn't realize that would be happening. We had a birthday of one of the dragon hearts while we were here. Didn't realize that would be happening. And everything just was synchronous and amazing. And I can't wait for the next full moon. We're going to be in Egypt. And that's going to be huge with the female black dragon. So watch for the energies. There's going to be so much happening between now and the winter solstice. So thanks for being on. I love you guys. I'm going to share this out. Feel free to share it out to the world because this is big news. This is finally some really big pieces towards where we're headed dimensionally in this dimensional shift. Love you. See you next time. If you are feeling the energies and want to get more connected to your dragon, definitely let me know. We can get you signed up for a dragon reading or a one-on-one -on -one reading session or get you on the list for the Eye of the Dragon program coming up uh, that's going to be launching like very soon and starting in January. And if you are meaning to do the transmissions coming from Egypt, they're going to be powerhouse, they're going to be transformative, and I know a lot of you have the intention of signing up. Get to the group event link. I'll post it again uh, probably by tomorrow when I get home on my regular computer, but make sure to get signed up. So like while you're thinking of it, yes, it's a month away, but a week before you might forget let's get it in place so we have you all in there and just start setting the intention for that because the larger the group the more impact it's going to have energetically so i'm really excited about those we have uh i want i want to say close to 15 already signed up for that and i know it's going to be about double that so yay willow i'll sign up i know um quite a few of you that are on the call are lots of love to you guys we will see you soon and uh next time i'll be talking to you actually I get a week off now, so I'm going to talk to you from Disneyland next week. <laughs> so from uh, the land of wonder and magic to another land of wonder and magic with my kids. We'll see you next time. Lots of love. Bye.